What's going on, y'all? My wife, season five, episode eight. Okay, thank God they put it on at an earlier time, an hour earlier, so I can catch it. You know, so we can get this out of the way because usually it come on during the time Empire comes on. A answer this question with me, Blackish. Um, you know, when does that come on? Or you know, because I know they got the new show, Fresh Off the Boat, coming on tonight at the Modern Family before and after Modern Family at eight o'clock at the same time that. Blackish would have usually came on during the eight o'clock hour, but are they gonna move that to another night or something? I'm confused. Like, girl, where is it? But anyway, that's not what we're talking about. We talk about mob wives. Mob wives is a continuation from that fight last week. Okay, y'all was going off in the comments. Y'all was going off in the comments. Y'all was enthused. I was like, God damn. Okay, you know. And um, a lot of us agreed on a lot of things, so that's cool. I like that. Um, of course. It's a continuation. They got Natalie out in the parking lot. She's smoking her cigarette. They trying to uh, uh, push Karen back. Like, girl, go over there and do what you got to do. Um, you're not finna get next to her and all this shit. She was like, come on, let's fight. Me and you, one-on-one, one-on-one. And I'm like, Karen, you had your opportunity to stick that bitch, and you didn't. Okay, let's be honest. It really was no jazz punch, push, and if it was... They didn't they they didn't connect hard enough, okay? That's what I'm saying. Don't both y'all had a couple of scratches. Whoop the fucking do. Okay? Now, all that hair pulling and bullshit. Come on, y'all gotta come harder than that. Drita, I'm so tired of this shit. And I see everything is all fucked up now. And if we gonna do this, I'm so tired of this shit. And this um um social media and all this shit. And I'm fucking the next bitch up. I'm like, Drita, calm the fuck damn i get it you pissed off i would have been kind of pissed off too because i'm like damn i can't get my shrimps to eat you know but calm down this is they fight let them f fight it out it ain't between you it ain't between you know anybody else but them so other than that that's what happened with the fight they ended like that then we see um um natalie at home with Landon, he comes in from working out, and he like, what happened to your fa what happened to your face? It was like, no, you tell me what happened to your face. This is the first time we ever seen Landon like, you know, buck up like he finna whoop somebody ass. And I'm like, Landon, sit your ass back down, cause you <laughs> just be cute, cause you not finna do shit. But surprisingly, he wasn't pissed off at the fact that she got into the fight. You know, she was like, well, you defended yourself. If you was defending yourself, that's fine. And then Natalie was like, basically, she surprised Renee Damn jump into it. And Natalie gets this, got this thought in her head that her and Renee got this mutual, some kind of weird, still got this bond with each other. There's this, like, like Renee left the door open for her to come back or some shit like that. I was like, girl... I think you reading a little bit too much into it, but if you want to feel that way, you can feel that way. But I don't think that's never going to happen. But, um, you know, Natalie was like, fuck them. I'm, I'm not here for her. I came there trying to be respectful, but Karen was ready to fight. She had her hair pulled up. I said, girl, you should have already known. You should have already fucking known. But anyway, she said next time, you know, if shit happens, she gonna be ready. She gonna have her hand a bun. And she was like, I'm gonna still say what I gotta say. The bitch still a rat. Her family did this and she did this and da-da-da. I said, see, Natalie, you didn't get your ass semi-whooped and you still don't learn your lesson. Then we have Renee talking on the phone to a friend of hers about how her basement flooded or something like that. And she had to move this dresser. And behind a dresser, she sees this uh letter that Junior wrote to her son. Talking about, you know, he misses him and, you know, he's going down for this. He got all these robberies and an attempt and murder on his belt. And so he's going to be in jail for life without, with, with the possibility of parole or something like that. And Renee is over the fact that you are, that he is telling his son this stuff. Y'all know whenever um, Junior is mentioned, Renee goes from zero to 100 that like quick. Okay. She just over it. And I can understand her frustration because y'all got to remember, Junior ratted out her father. So, you know, it's Renee, and she's dramatic, but I get it. So, you know, Drita's with her daughters, and, you know, she's just over the drama. And she's just like, let me focus on Lady Boss and this calendar. I forgot to mention that they did a calendar suit shoot last week, and Big Ange was one of the models or whatever. And... Um, she's with her daughters and she like, you know, pick which, um, mangas, uh, which photo you like best. And, you know, they having a little bonding time. Anytime when it's no lie on any 
reality show, I don't care how ratchet or how boring some may think a show may be, anytime when they are with whoever it is, they are spending time with their kids and they're doing motherly, fatherly stuff or whatever, that'd be some of the best things to me. And that's because cause it seems more real, okay? Because you're not doing all this drama. You're actually doing something that you're supposed to be doing with your family or involving your kids and, you know, showing that you are a good parent or seeming that you're a good parent and, you know, stuff like that. I think it's cute. So I thought that scene was cute because I was tired of seeing Drita just being so amped up like she didn't drink 15 red bulls and some vodka at the same damn time and snorted some coke like that's how amped up she was but um you know that was nice so drita not drita carrying me up with natalie d natalie d and her you know reminiscing about what happened natalie d was like oh shit so y'all really got into it karen like what drita said she think that um Natalie wanted to um go ahead and fight Karen because she was ready because she was egging stuff on by some of the stuff that she was saying. And I was like, true. So Natalie G, don't act like you didn't come there with the intentions of starting some shit. Okay, you may not thought that you was gonna get into a physical fight, but you do you egg that shit on a little bit because of you know words, words incite stuff. Okay, um. Anyway, move moving on. So. Karen and, um, you know, Natalie D are talking and then Natalie D drops the bomb saying that Natalie G be talking about all of y'all, talking about Drita, talking about, um, 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 Big Ange and them saying why y'all want to be, uh, why you, why do I, Natalie D, wants to be hanging around them old sea hags and stuff like that and she overheard her on the phone talking and, you know, she was still trying to talk shit to her boyfriend and all this stuff and I'm just like, child it will never end first of all i just gotta say y'all too old for this shit if you don't like a bitch stop leave it alone and somebody you hear somebody saying some shit about it girl i don't fuck with that hoe so i don't need to know okay so that way that bitch won't say that oh well i heard you said this no you didn't hear you that i said this because i don't know what the fuck you're talking about i exit you out my life a long time ago when i say i'm done i'm done that means every memory every it, it, it ends it ends and it's erased, okay? It's no coming back. That's how I am, you know. It is what it is. They just too old for all this back and forth. He say, she say shit. It's just tiring. So, uh, Karen and Storm, they meet up. They having this little day walking along the riverside and waterfront and all that stuff. And that's thing, you know, she talking about some... She want to open up a miracle marijuana dispensary or whatever. And um, they talking about names and stuff. And I was like, girl, didn't you already have some stuff with the drugs and shit? You should be wanting not to be on that. And she was like, you know, I did some stuff illegally. Now I want to do some stuff legally. I was like, okay. Okay. I mean, it's your world. Um, then uh, Drita meets up with Natalie D. And they're in the boxing uh, place or whatever. And they're going over their history and how, you know, Natalie D used to box. And her father put her in a ring. And how, you know, she actually used to do the fighting in the boxing rings or whatever. And one of her first fights, she lost to this girl. But then she came back and, you know, kept going until she beat her. And, of course, anything dealing with fighting or something like that, that's how you win Drew to respect, okay? And, you know, they bonding over that stuff. And then, um... Natalie G comes up and Natalie D tells her that, tells Drita that, you know, given all the stuff that's been happening between the girls, she guessed that um, Natalie G called her boyfriend and she had the boyfriend put her on speakerphone and was like, you know, Drita, Ange, and um, Karen, all them, they hags and stuff like that. And I said, oh. Oh, so you know, Drita like, oh, okay, bitch. We'll see. We'll see who the fuck you want to call sea hags and shit like that. You know, that's all Drita needs. That's all Drita needs. Then we get, um, after that, you got, what's her name? Renee going out with a friend of hers and Karen also, another girl and um, Karen, to, you know, have a girl's night out. After all this drama, they just want some, they just want to have fun, okay? They're going shopping and then Karen shows up. And tells her that, girl, Junior got sentenced, okay? And he got sentenced to 11 years in prison. And, you know, Renee was like, let me sit down because I'm feeling a little flustered. I feel a little lightheaded. 
because she's relieved that now she don't have to be looking over her shoulder for this dude to become because she had a fear that he was going to get out any anytime soon sometimes you know way quicker than that and you know i was just like okay you know you got 11 years hopefully it's 11 years without parole but my thing of it is 11 years that's just that's gonna go back kind of quick and i'm like that's just it 11 years let me tell y'all son i got a gray hair up in this bitch somewhere i'm so tired of the, like my shit so mad it, it's like all this right here is new growth and i'm over it I gotta get to the shop, and it's Black History Month, and you know, you know, doing Black History Month, they got a sale going on too. So, you know, Ashley's all about a sale, you know. So look, I'm just saying, cause I'm tired of looking at it. I know y'all tired of me saying it, but um, anyway, it is what it is. So Renee's relieved at that, but I would have wanted more. I would have expected more. Eleven years for all the shit that he's done. And then violating probation, you already been in jail, then you violate their probation, then you get charged with a murder. But I guess since you ratted out so many people, his sentence just kept getting lower and lower and lower. Now imagine how long he would have been in there had he actually stayed quiet. Mm. So Karen is down in uh, Phoenix, Arizona with the rest of her family. You know, because her brother Gerard is having this um, opening for a new restaurant. And so before the restaurant opens to the public, they're going to have this big family dinner. You know, you got all the brothers, cousins, nieces, nephews, and her daughter. And let me tell you, Karen has a nice looking family. A very nice looking family, you know. And I was like, they all kind of cute. Go ahead, y'all. And, you know, the mama is recounting, recanting a story. Recanting. Girl, that means take a right. <laughs> Mama is retelling, recounting a story from, um, you know, when Karen and her brother were kids because they was talking about the little girl, Karina, saying that, oh, you know, you you nothing like your parents. You're nothing like your mom. You're nothing like your uh, uncle, whatever. And talking about how the kids almost got shot at one point because they were sneaking out the house and Sammy took his gun out. And he heard somebody on the roof and she had to wake up and remember that that's the kids, the kids. It was the kids, you know, don't shoot them. But that was cute. And I was like, man, that's how y'all tell y'all stories? Talking about guns and almost getting killed and y'all laughing at the table? <laughs> Shit, I, okay, okay. It was cute, it was funny. And then Karen wants to tell and drop the bomb that, oh, so I'm thinking about these businesses and I think that I should open up a miracle marijuana um, dispensary. The mama was like, girl, please, are you crazy? Out here in um, Arizona, and with the name Gravano, they're going to be looking at you crazy and everything because you already had this uh, shit against you, you know. And Karen started talking about how, you know, she was a part of an ecstasy ring with her um, her brother and their father took the rap for, you know. So that's why he's serving like 20 years in jail or whatever for them. And I was like, hmm. And um, after that, you know, it is what it is. Renee, back in New York, uh, she was basically saying how when she first heard about Junior getting sentenced to 11 years, she just felt like, look at this gray hair, y'all. It's the um, relief off of his, uh, off her mind, you know, relief off her shoulders and stuff like that, weight off her shoulders. But she hasn't really thought about how, you know, AJ may be feeling because he's kind of quiet ever since he heard the news. And when she was with um, Karen and her friend, her friend was like, you know, even though you may think of, you know, um, Junior this way, that's still AJ's father and he probably not going to be thinking about him that way, you know, the same way as you. And then, you know, Renee has to sit down with AJ and when he first started talking, I said, oh my God, is he going to cry? He was like, what you want me to say? <laughs> His voice was small like that. What you want me to say? I said, is he going to cry? But um, Renee just feels bad for him. And he was like, you know, he really wasn't there most of my life. So what am I supposed to do? You know, how am I supposed to feel? Am I supposed to feel sorry or whatever? And, you know, Renee just feels like she picked the wrong man to be in her life. And she made a dumb choice. And now she's paying for it. And now her child has to pay for it. And she was apologizing to him. And, you know, it was just a sad thing to watch. You know, choices have consequences. And this is the consequence. So, all the girls are getting together for Drita's little calendar event. And, you know, before the fight, Drita had um, invited everybody to come, including Natalie G, you know, or D or whoever. Basically, everybody. And then Renee was like, you know, she can come, but she ain't sitting over here by me. 
And you got this issue with them just talking shit about Natalie G. Like, Ange refuses to see... I don't know. At this point, like, I was trying to see, you know, where Ange was coming from and be like, you know, you can't tell me who I can be cool with. But, so, because I'm the same type of person like that. But, you know, with all this stuff that's being said and there's so many people, people outside your circle, inside your circle, and then she's talking shit about you, you know, Drita telling them what happened and all this stuff. And it's like... Big Ange is still not here for them talking about Natalie G. Like, what is it that making her hold on? Is she really that loyal of a person? I, I don't know. I don't know. Somebody tell me what it is. Would you keep holding on? Because I would have just... I I don't know. I don't know. And then all of a sudden, Renee gets this text from Natalie talking about some, you know, you said ring your bell, so that's exactly what I'm doing. How about lunch? How about dinner and some drinks or whatever? I guess to talk and Renee like girl she totally missed the point of what she was trying to say she said ring my when she told her you know ring my bell that meant all you had to do was apologize then and then we could have all could have been forgiven and none of this shit could have been you know going on and Renee like at this point in time over and done with I'm not here for you we'll never be friends and here come um big Ann. she misses you she, I think deep down she misses you and she wants your friendship she likes you that's all fine and well, but you shouldn't have did what you did to piss her off and then, you know, carrying on like this. So, it's Renee. She ain't finna forget that girl. I told y'all she had that shit mixed up. <laughs> Natalie, really? <laughs> I mean, she got balls, but, you know, I would just say, fuck it. <laughs> Not yet. Not yet. So, you got Nat D chiming in saying, word for word, what, you know, Natalie G supposedly has said about them being sea hags and calling them out by name. And... It's like Big Ange not trying to hear it. Big Ange turns on Drita, not necessarily turns on Drita, but was like, you know, I'm over this Natalie talk. Quit talking about it and let's give her the benefit of the doubt. She hasn't done nothing wrong. And I'm like, well, Big Ange, you really don't know that because you don't live with her. You don't live in the same area with her. And you don't hang out in her circle all the time. So you don't know what's going on or who's telling the truth. It's true. You don't know. Neither one knows what's the actual truth, okay? Everybody could be lying in this situation to for their own benefit. But <laughs> she was like, I'm tired of these fucking conversations about Natalie. Now I'm here for your fucking calendar, okay? Now shut the fuck up. And she walked the fuck off. Big and just over it. But y'all tell me how y'all felt about tonight's episode. And, um... I'll see y'all later. Gotta go watch Empire. Peace.